Welcome back to Chasing Nostalgia. Our journey so far has taken us to a barncade, a warehouse, the largest arcade in America, the roof of an amusement park, and now, the captain's ship? Come with me on a mission as we revisit the past. <laughs> Hi, how y'all doing? I'm Chris Campbell, owner of Captain's Auction Warehouse. Welcome to the Captain's Quarters right here. Yeah, I've been in business since 1999, bringing you arcade games, pinball machines, and the like for all these years. Ralph and Mason are here. We're gonna give them a tour of the entire warehouse facility today. I'm glad they showed up. They come in from all over the world, and that's where I get people coming into the auctions. We're having one this weekend. And we're here for the action. Right on, Captain Chris. Now show us how you run this ship. I'm calling it a project. You can call it whatever you want. And you're literally up there that whole the freaking yeah. whole time. Yeah, <laughs> I'm up there on the stage. <laughs> Dude. That's my spot. Built it that way years ago. Yeah. Right. Put big screens up. On the Jumbotrons, if you're sitting here, what you're going to be seeing is the items that we're selling. So we have a camera crew that goes around with a camera, and they've got it all up on the screen. So as you're going item oh, okay. to item. That makes sense, because you're not you're putting the item, item in front of no, the people. No, no. There's, there's, but we used to cattle call it. So we used to just like follow the bouncing ball. I've been at Captain's for only five minutes, and my eyes are now open to all the behind the scenes work it takes to keep this ship sailing. All this doesn't happen with just one or two people. It takes an army of passionate employees, and that's exactly what Chris has assembled here. Everyone's really hustling to make sure things are ready for showtime. All this stuff obviously just showed up not that long ago, right? But do you mm -hmm. have do you have actual product staged for multiple auctions? Or, you know what I mean? Do you have like months worth of auctions ready, or is it? Well, occasionally I'll have some games that have come in too late to get into an auction. So that stuff will roll into the next sale. For the most part, what you see here, 90% of it is all new goods coming in. Oh, wow. They start calling the day after the auction is over. When can I bring equipment in? Wait till next week, then they show up yeah. that Monday and I hear a sound in the parking lot and it's tires screeching, they're leaving and there's a game rolling across the parking lot. People are just dropping stuff off. Like post-auction two weeks and this will have nothing in it. This will be completely bare. Well, it won't be bare because we'll be taking stuff in From the prime already. Value. Oh wow, that's, so it's that quick. It's constant. It's constant. I mean, I have accounts that are all over the country that send equipment here. All these giant games too, they just show up. Like, they don't even say, I get like, oh, it's a new account, great. They just have a business card attached to some paper really? and their driver <laughs> shows up with a pile of parts. So Lance over here, he's my construction guy. All these big games you see, like, they're all in pieces. People will deliver that game in pieces. Do you suggest that people break it down or keep it together? Yeah, but I just ask so them, please, please bring me complete games. I can't even begin to explain how crazy it is to be here in person. Tons of games left behind, but the silver lining is that they'll be repurchased and enjoyed all over again. Some may end up in a new arcade or a personal collection, who knows, but the fact that the games are still in demand tells me one thing, retro arcade gaming is here to stay. But even with all this, we're still not even scratching the surface of what Captains has on the ship. Is this literally a truck that just showed up? Are these games being unloaded that are gonna go Yep. This is the pickup stuff here. How do you end up getting your hands on these? Where are these even coming from? Like, are they, I mean, so they're all trade secrets, Ralph. Japan imports or what? Like, that's crazy. What is it? Well, you know, <laughs> here's the deal with some of these, they have hoppers in them. So that tells me really? this is like a, you know, mm, gaming game. But it is very unique. <laughs> you know what people have done is they, they, they've gotten these and they pull this out, put a joystick, joystick in, in, and they make a 60 in one or something. Oh, that's interesting. You make a multi cade So huh. I think what you're doing is you put coins in and you play, okay. and if you win, lose, whatever. And so then do you think they hopper. were probably like casino games, maybe? Of course they or were. Something like that? Like the patchy slow thing? Is that yeah. I saying that right? Yeah, patchy I think slow? so. Yeah. yeah, there's no way to say that. <laughs> I don't know how to say it. Yeah, it's just the word leaves out. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot so, to be. Yeah, there's a lot to be. <laughs> that's a whole other story. Believe me when I tell you that. Is well, this all for this auction that's this weekend? This is this all weekend? for this auction. I don't think I've ever really seen this kind of stuff at auction, but maybe I'm just not paying attention to it. Or well, that's my Friday sale. This, okay, this, all, this is all going to sell today. I love this stuff. I'm super nostalgic for these. Like, the, oh yeah, these prizes heads. always seemed so cool as a kid, but they, yeah. they weren't that cool. But they seemed cool. My guys have been bird feeding out of some of these <laughs> candy feeders over here. Lance, Lance comes over here and gobbles up out of here and out of the M and M. The M and M's, I think they were up to here. Stealing stale candy out of a candy machine? Who would do such a thing? This is all today. The plush, 
the change machines. Dude, one time you were doing an auction, I don't know why, I was tripping out. It was at 200 and you were stuck there. Uh -huh. I'm like, why is it stuck at 200? I'm like, I have no, I'm not opening up an arcade, but I wanted it because I want to <laughs> play with this stuff and it was complete. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it, it, it bit up a little bit, yeah, yeah. but it went for like 400 and it was like yeah, a complete and, system. And you know what? I don't know, even with this technology, this would be like 8,000 probably. Yeah. I bought a change machine from you as well. Yeah. Did you get the little one? BC 1200, probably yeah, yeah, it's similar like to these. like this one here. I put it in the house. Just oh, yeah, yeah. My wife's like, <laughs> seriously, she's like, you, are you going to pay to play your own games? Yeah, I was yeah. like, but that'd be cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> and she's all, no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm an online bidder. If I want to bid tonight, can uh -huh. I, do I have to do anything else or am I ready to go? Like, you I already, already have registered, right? I'm registered. Yeah, you're set. What's the cool, like, hand sign? Like, how do I look? If, if I'm all, it's like this, like. I'll probably laugh. <laughs> I'll probably laugh. You know, I think you should give me one of those. <laughs> that I'm scared. <laughs> or just, you know, create your own, like... Oh, that's way cooler. Yeah, let me try that. <laughs> <laughs> but are there times where you don't actually know if people are bidding because they're that discreet? Well, the worst <laughs> ones are, like, when I'm really into, I'm going and going, and I know, because I know the guys or whatever, out of the side of my vision, They'll be talking to somebody and they'll go like this. And I oh, know so what, yeah, I know that's... what they're doing is they're trying to mess with me because I, I look at it because <laughs> I see a hand go up, you know, and then it'll be like, I'll be like this and they'll, they'll kind of stop talking to me. Oh, no, no, no. So I get oh, some okay. of those. So I try to, well, I'm going to perfect it. I'm going to practice it. I'm going to come up with something good though. Practice it. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do. You're going to be thinking about your, your <laughs> sign. This is killer. And just when I thought the tour was over, Chris showed me the showroom. This place is pristine and the pinball selection is off the charts. You can tell some serious passion was poured into the creation of this room. Dude, this is so nice. So what what do you mainly do out of this room? Is it tournaments or just? Uh, it's mostly tournaments and like coin drop play. Okay. And people can come in. I, I do have it open from 12 to nine, Monday through Fridays. Okay. Does it do pretty well? It does okay and it's got a bunch of regulars. This is A-roll yeah. footage right here. Everything oh in God. here is like, cool. and the majority of it, depending on the era, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, <laughs> the silly. new stuff. You know, the play fields are, are beautiful on them. You have all the AV stuff. So does that same team that does all that do like the cameras for the pinball play field or did you have to have someone else do that? I did all that. That's pretty freaking awesome actually. Now I was kind of just building stuff as I went along, you know? But what's that over there? Like what's that little? Well, thing? that's my office. Okay. Well, you know, if I'm gonna just build a room, to I gotta have an office. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's good to be able to set up posts from different that's places. That's right. I think I want this in my house. This room <laughs> just like this. Yeah. This is killer. Would that be if you have a tournament or something? Or is that so, what So yeah, when are? we run tournaments, so that stage I built so I can run auctions from there. Okay, we do okay. live streaming. Uh, we got a, a wireless streaming rig, so we'll stream some of the pinball machines. A lot of people come here and play. We'll get 50, 60 people in this tournaments sometimes. This must sound awesome when this is all. Oh, it's, it's, it's pretty, <laughs> there's it's a lot pretty sweet. And yeah. you can run everything in here. All, all no all power right. surge. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It's actually, it's actually really nice. That is from the Museum of Pinball. It was in the gift shop and it was actually purchased in the museum auction and donated. So it was an oh, angel nice. investor bought it. He purchased it and said, here you go. After visiting all three buildings, it's safe to say they all play an essential role in the magic that is Captain's Auctions. I'm not sure I should admit this, but I obsessively watch every single auction. Just ask Mason, he saw it for himself. Before we headed to the auction, we took a trip to visit the beach, downtown Orange, and some other places. I was pretty distracted knowing I was missing some of the auction action. I was glued to it. This is a good deal. After finally seeing how things run with my own eyes, there's so much more going on than what you see online. It's not just an auction, it's an entire production. Everyone working together to make sure things go off without a hitch. All right, we're back at the auction and I'm just itching to win something. Who knows, maybe I'll get lucky. different pizza parlors, locations, they come in from all over the country. Part of their rotation is some of this equipment is in such fantastic condition. They've still got bill acceptors on, they got coin man set up. Uh, but they do come in and various, they're all used. 
Yeah, Chris, I see you, you see me. I'm trying to channel my inner auctioneer to nab this deal. Earlier, Chris gave me a little training course on auctioneering 101. I think I did okay. I only have perfected the, the ending part of the auction. Sold your way for 50 bucks. Right. Is that right? <laughs> no, no, that. Sold your way for 500 bucks. Yeah, sold your way for 500 yeah. bucks. That's it. Big bucks, that's it. All done, all through. Waiting, waiting, waiting. You know, one more time, yeah. one more time. Yeah. And then somebody hits it and it catches fire and goes again. Okay. And then we'll start it over again. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a call. All done all through. through. Done all through. Well, I don't through. say it too many times. I'm like, okay. that's just my anybody else impression of it. Yeah. Let's do this, Chris. I'm all in. In the middle of the auction, Chris saw me looking at my phone and he said, hey man, are you ordering burritos for the staff? I'm pretty sure he was joking, but I don't like to turn down a challenge. Grubhub showed up with Chipotle shortly after. It's the least I could do since everyone was so awesome to us during the visit. There's a, there's a bowl in there. Goodness. All right, hey Ralph. <laughs> you're, a, you're a man of the time right there. Chris gave me free reign of the building, so I did some exploring, and there are definitely some rare gems in here. In this batch of auction items, they had everything from the 80s, 90s, 2000s, and even some current games. I also saw one of my old cabs I restored, a Nintendo vs. Goonies. It went for a lot, too. Maybe I should have held on to that one. Holy sh**. A Sinistar cockpit? I have no idea how many of these were made, but it's awesome to see one up close. So maybe my auction prowess isn't as strong as I originally thought. I lost a bunch of deals throughout the day, but sometimes you need to strike when the iron's hot, and it was red hot. So I sprung into action and took one down. Corner here going twice. Third and final call, Donald through, 400, 500, 500, 500, one more time. Uh, so it's your way, $400. Good job, Ralph. Before we close out the day, I wanted to go visit Lost Levels. It's an arcade game store based here in Southern California. They offer gaming experiences from shopping for retro classics to playing actual games in their designated arcade area. I took a bit of a walkthrough, and while they have a great selection of games and consoles, nothing really caught my attention. Okay, so we just left Lost Levels, and the cool thing about this place is they have arcade games and console games, so it's like a retail store and a place where you can go play arcade games. But why would I buy console games at Lost Levels? Because tomorrow morning, we're going to visit the Pixel Game Squad. Wow, today was such a long day. I am beat. Tomorrow can't be more crazy than today, right? I'm not a morning person. I clearly have a long day ahead of me. It's the game! <laughs> What's up, bro? How are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, my name's Riff. I'm Ricky. We've been game hunting hardcore at Swap Meets. All started here. We're actually probably right on the 10 year marker right now. This is what we do. This is our livelihood. We come out here every single weekend of our lives and game hunt. The goal is always to find stuff. Collection comes first and then flip things on the side to build that collection. Yep. We've been suffering with this sickness for a long time. Do we want help? No. Are our family struggling because of it? Yes. Will we change? No. Welcome to the show. Man, Riff and Ricky really know how this works. They're basically OGs at game hunting. So today we're at Orange County College Swap Meet to check out the goods and hopefully find some deals on as many nostalgic items as possible. We're only an hour in and there's so much to see that it's honestly a bit overwhelming for me. I'm used to looking for big and heavy arcade machines and they're pretty easy to spot. Literally, I didn't see anything in that pile. I have and he somehow saw the Zelda book. It's crazy, like I would have never saw that. The best way I hunt is look for crap and then look under it. That's that what was I crazy tell though, dude, because I walked by it and I was like, oh yeah, whatever. Literally you know? all I saw is that like <laughs> pee and I was like, ooh, kind of reminds me of one of the Zelda books. That was a good, that was a good find, man. Toys, Ricky? Anything good? Dude, you should get this for Caleb. What? <laughs> Been friends since for how long now? Since high school, early high school. And then when did you start doing this? Very shortly after. Really? Yeah. And, and you basically <laughs> haven't stopped since. Have not stopped. 
That's not so even for a moment. Really? Like, yeah, there's yeah. not a weekend that you don't go. No. Uh-uh. And collecting is in our blood. It's not just video games. They figured out how to, like, get the wives just be like, we're, this is, like, normal, right? now. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But they hang out they all the time. They're, they're best buddies, too. Oh, that's good. They're in each other's yeah, weddings that. and stuff. That, yeah. Yeah. I gotta figure that out. It was like, no. <laughs> we, we tricked them good! <laughs> tricked Suckers! Yeah. Tricked them so good. <laughs> this table brings back crazy memories, because I used to, back in high school, I used to install car stereos for, like, my friends and stuff, because they wanted, like, speakers and subwoofers and stuff, but I'd always install the head units, and there's, like, a bunch of them here. And the cool thing about these is, for security reasons, you could take your face plate off, and all these are kind of like that. I don't know, it just brings back crazy memories. Those. You do? Yeah. Actually, go for it. I don't think a lot. I mean, they, they made them and no one liked them. Yeah, check it out. I have no idea, dude. Wow. <laughs> That's cardboard. Right? I know, I'm like, <laughs> what the heck? It's broken. It only comes with cardboard. <laughs> How much? Ten and five. Are you going for both? Ten and five? Yeah. So 15. 15 grand, ready? Yeah. I mean, uh. <laughs> 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 well, let's get the Nintendo. Nintendo. <laughs> You lose our 25 and I... Oh, and oh my! And how much eight. if we win? 20. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's only $2. Alright, alright. All right. What okay. are you calling it? You gotta call it though. <laughs> Who called? Ricky said him. Tails. Tails. Tails? Yeah, Tails. Oh! <laughs> oh! Here you go! There's my two back. <laughs> Every oh, time he loses the toy coin <laughs> It's like the mic on American Pickers. <laughs> Have a good day, man. You too. Basically, for 20 bucks, got a good amount of stuff. We got all the Labo stuff. Doesn't come with the game. SSX on the Xbox 360. The arcade one up, and I always find loose Wii's. So this is actually stuff all that I needed for 20 bucks for all this. I, a big thing I was saying, because Ralph was like, yeah, but that one's worth this, or that one's worth this. I'm like, it's, it's all about the bulk price. It's all about what am I getting for all of this. So, 20 bucks for all that's a great deal. I love it because he's like, bro, you owe me one. Let's flip again. <laughs> great gig. Oh, ready? Uh, oh, thank oh. you. Appreciate it. Oh, How much are they? Five bucks? Why not? I think it doesn't go for a lot of stores. Like, store Alright, let's go. 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 let us go just like that, after a morning of training with the Pixel Game Squad, I finally snagged my first deal. Okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Let's go. An Asteroids remake on PS1 and uh, NASCAR I mean, Thunder three for 2002. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. It wasn't an initial. If you don't know this about me, I'm nostalgic for movies too, and I'm a really big fan of Back to the Future. That's why I stopped in my tracks to see this NES game signed by Michael J. Fox himself. Well, supposedly. All right, I looked up Michael J. Fox's signature. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm gonna see what he wants for it, but it looks close. Wow. The sign is for Michael J. Fox. Okay, 200. I'm out. <laughs> no, it's just only sign. Oh, that's nice. Look, there's more Wheaties in the box. The Wheaties, yeah. Sign. Michael J. Fox. This is Michael J. Fox Wheaties. Yeah, dude. Dude, sick. Back to the future is quite a phrase to think about, having passed on those items from earlier. We live in such a hustle bustle type of world nowadays that it's sometimes difficult to look back on what made us who we are. From mere decades ago, in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, every new generation fell into their own version of nostalgia. Now my favorite things may be arcades, maybe yours are too, and maybe they're not. But having said that, it's so hard to imagine what life would be like without our passions, without nostalgia without something to be able to look back on in life and be able to smile about. Life goes quicker every day, but imagine if it stopped in the era we were most happiest, the most carefree versions of ourselves, where time seemed slower, and we just had a few extra moments to appreciate the things we had before they were gone. Luckily for us, everyone we encountered on this journey together is all about that. They're about letting time freeze. They're about preservation about allowing arcade gaming to live another day, in whatever way that may be for them. Maybe it's a barncade or a warehouse full of classics that someone has just a little too much trouble letting go of. Or it could be owning the biggest, most influential arcade in the country. Or it could lead us to the roof of an amusement park. Whatever nostalgia is to you, it's tied to an entire generation who probably feels the same way. Well, 
I hate to say this, but it's the end of the line for now. But the adventure will continue. It's never really over. The quest to chase nostalgia is a forever journey. So my friends, cherish today because it will be nostalgic tomorrow. This is Chasing Nostalgia.